Peace, peace, peace. This, this, this ain't gonna be a long message. I'm gonna get these pictures. I just wanna share this with y'all, man. So today I was painting with a beautiful, a beautiful someone. Um, beautiful little princess that's like, she's three. And, um, you know, I always come with a message and I'm just looking, like I said, I'm looking at these and I'm noticing something that we probably all don't really pay attention to. You know, and as I, uh, was sitting there painting with her, you know, these things which may look like a mistake to some, an accident to others. Um, the, and I'm going to show you the point that I'm getting at. Um, it may look like what it, I don't know how I need to tell this to, it may look like your life is all over the place. <laughs> it amazes me how we can pay attention to one thing like the basically the baby was showing me because I'm sitting observing. I'm painting with her, but I also pay attention to most of this she did herself. But I was just there to be the observer. We're in some of our lives we we can represent elders, but at the same moment, we also are reminded of what the innocence and purity of who we all, who who we've always been. And the reason I'm getting to that is like, this reminds me of reclaiming what I always, what I've been saying, like the crown of glory of my childhood, my innocence. Because even though I'm sitting beside her and she's painting. She can only do so much. You know, I could hand her the paintbrushes. I could, um, you know, we know that, again, some people may see this. This is like I see this as my life right now. But to her, she just present, like not seeing any fault, not seeing any wrong, not seeing any anything but to paint and to be innocent so i'm there beside her and i'm grabbing the paint because you know i have the paint beside me which are in bottles because you know if you give a child well you know a baby something they may put it everywhere you know um it may go everywhere on them or whatever and and even with that we feel like we can protect them from the world now, there is a such thing as physical protection. But the Most High put me in a place to observe and see how the Most High, you know, how Source operates, how the Creator, God, whatever you may call it, your higher power. I'm getting the paint on her command, you know, as she asks it. So I get the paint. And she was like, um, blue, please. I said, yes, whatever you like. And see, this is the thing about life. I'm learning. It's like we can ask for something. Do we really know how much, how it's going to come in, what the form it may come in? And we judge easily of even how it's presented. Not knowing she may want the blue or we may want the blue but we still, somehow, the creator knows what we need. And when I say me being there and every color she suggested, I even try to see how I felt because, you know, she'll ask for purple, right? And then she'll look up and I was like, okay, you want more purple? And it was nothing wrong what she said or suggested it's me seeing do we even allow people to hold a space to be themselves 
And the reason I'm making this video about that is because there's a lot of things that I may have overlooked. Uh, a lot of us maybe have felt overlooked in our lives. A lot of us may have felt we wasn't heard. A lot of us may have felt that whether it be parents, whether it be people, whomever it is that we've grown attached to or love and we're 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 simply just like that child it's like everyone is different no one of these paintings are the same but what makes it unique is that it's expressed in in a way that cannot be bought cannot be purchased cannot be manipulated cannot be copy copy it can be copied but it cannot be you can, it cannot be duplicated you cannot be duplicated so i just want to share that message with you all is that some may call you a some may have said what you've done is a failure or um that you haven't accepted or really feel how they want you to feel and in that process of observing what she was doing, um, there was someone else there present. And even their response, you know, the elder, and this is not about pointing a finger or saying she was wrong for what she did, but me just observing everyone and how that child would remind us of who we are and how they're still evolving and becoming and how they pay attention to everything because as I was painting with her, she watched me do something and then went right after and did it. She didn't maybe do it exactly the same way, but that goes to show like a lot of us don't even realize that awareness of we're, we're not even living our lives. But it also showed me how the child is observing We've observed others' lives so much that we don't even know how to live. Do we really know what it is to be ourselves authentically, innocently, unapologetically? Do we really know what it is to be ourselves? When I saw this, without me telling her what to do with the paintbrush, how to do it, this, this showed me that no matter what I've created as an artist, was I doing it from a place so the world could see? Or am I doing it for me? That's what she showed me. And so I look at my life like this. It's like some people may look at this and say this is a mess. Some people may look at your life and say your life is a mess because of what you've done. How you done it. When you did it. But there's a saying that goes, I may not be your favorite color. What is it? I may not be your favorite, um, may not be your favorite crayon or your favorite color. But someday you'll have to use me or need me. Someday you'll need me for your masterpiece. And as I sat beside her, I do more observing. And I was just like, she's only simply asking for what she needs. And I was like, wow. And I say that to say this, is that there's no one on my path that I haven't acknowledged or I will acknowledge you now. Everyone who was on my path, even those who yet to meet me, but the ones that have experienced me. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Because I wouldn't be where I'm at now hadn't we either made a mess together hadn't you had to be in my life to be one of these one of these things or you know a lot of which we can say take for granted but some people are simply like a puzzle piece this person had to come along that relationship had to happen that experience had to happen so you can see who you are you know there was an elder that was present and as she watched the baby paint she would tell her, hey, don't do that. You know, as we were painting, um, you're making a mess. Or don't get that on you. 
And I was just like, wow. My perception of things as an artist was just like, this is beautiful. It's unique. But at that moment, that elder was saying from a place, basically she was speaking from a place where she felt that it was a mess or she perceived it as a mess. And this can sound a little extreme, but in essence, a lot of what we say is how we feel about ourselves. Now you tell me, what about this is ugly? Nothing. But some people will look at this being their perspective or perception on artistry and will judge a child that's three and say, that's a mess. That's ugly. That's hideous. How, like who done that? But yet, it amazes me how you go out into these museums or you see these people who could actually, there's no difference in what they're doing. They will judge someone art for what their worth is. Who is it benefiting? This is why I learned, even on my path, and I know an artist and a lot of people, music, musicians and who, whatever you are, sometimes we are conflicted with even prices. There's no difference than being conflicted with ourselves. Because some artists are some of the we can be our own worst critics. We can beat ourselves up for the simplest things. But I'm here to tell you, look at this. There's no need to beat yourself up because that's not a mistake. This is not a mistake. You didn't fail. You were just giving the tools. Like I see a face right here. Somebody else may see water. But what I'm getting at is that do not let and allow people who have come into your life or people in the past write, write you off. And what I mean write you off is make a conclusion on your life story, on your journey. Because I can just show, could have just shown you this part and you have not known the bigger picture to what I'm saying. Again, just seeing these. It's art and magical in itself. And it simply reminded me that. What am I really doing? What am I trying to prove? What is there to prove? I mean, I made great art. Yes, I have a gift. Yes, we all have gifts. Some people, you know what? Some people honestly will compare their art a child would never compare. She doesn't care. Compare her art to me. That doesn't matter. So my message is to you is that the things that may matter in your world may not matter in my world. The things that you may see little may be big to someone else. Does that stop you from loving yourself and loving others? I had to see when, when she was asking for paint, you know, it was just the innocence in watching her create it. And then also learning from the elder, again, not to say that she said anything that was wrong or it ain't even about wrong or right. It's just how we've learned from others what is wrong and right or what is beautiful. What, and, and this goes back to worth. This baby created this. We painted these. This doesn't define my worth as an artist, as a human being, or as simply me. All of these are just simply a different thing, but it's like an evolution of who we are. So the innocence in this is just saying how amazing, you know, we all are. So I just want to relay that message to you. It's like you have to remember that your life is still going. If you're here, you still have something to contribute. My contribution to the little baby today is that it reminded me of my own innocence. Woo! Whoa. Yeah, it reminded me of my own innocence. <laughs> and um, if y'all only saw, wow. I, if, I could have shown you, but... 
whoo, there was a black snake <laughs> that came up like it was watching me. And by the time I looked, it was actually, that's why I said, whoo, and I looked and it actually ran off. That was interesting. But um, all while in this video, okay, so continue. <sighs> Breathe, nothing to fear, just a snake. But that's wild because actually I'm gonna speak about the snake totem since I own this video. But I wish I could have just like looked up and shown y'all that. I'll show you my feet, but I don't really care. <laughs> but the snake is actually important because some people fear that. But the snake actually, uh, what's so sacred about it is that it actually, um, it goes off the frequency of vibrations. The snake moves off vibrations. And it feels the vibration of the land. And that being said, also what's amazing about the, um, what's amazing about the snake is that, uh, you can be walking or something, and, it, and like, if you would've saw where that snake was, this snake had to come up. See me, which I'm telling you, only I could know from seeing it, but anywho, like I said, it goes off vibration. So even like when it's swiveling through the ground, it's awareness of where it is. And so it can see you before it see it. You can walk right by it or walk up on it. And again, due to the vibration change in the frequency, like the snake had to sense like when i looked up i was like whoa and then it moved off because there's no difference in us we can sense or feel like empaths or people that are you know in tune you can sense and shift a vibration like whether someone is in fear or in love um that being said the also the snake represents uh new beginnings and rebirth because if a snake doesn't shed its own skin um it will die so that that lets me know that like some people may perceive it like oh that's an enemy or this is whatever it is well if it had any intentions on attacking me it would have done that or if it felt like i was a threat it would have done that because the other day i was sitting and um on the phone with my mother and i had a b never in my life like this happened, but when I was younger, I was stung by one because I try to swat it. I would suggest you not swatting it to be um, because we naturally attract these things. I never had this happen until the other day. The bee actually landed on me and I've had bees come, but this one did it like three or four times, but it also, it didn't just land, it was crawling. And so that even goes back to like how these things also represent nature reflects so much of our life like did i feel like it like in my mind when it landed i was like okay if it stings me because this was more you got the honeybee that's much smaller than you have the bumblebee now the bumblebee was um it landed on me because you know they're bigger in size and i'm like yo if this thing stings me in my mind like i'm creating the anxiety which it has no intentions which I learned and research that if it lands on you, it doesn't feel that you are a threat. And I was like, oh. See, it, it, it amazes me how due to our own traumatic experiences, due to our own what we have experienced and projected as fear, I knew that it wasn't going to harm me. It's just in that moment, why did I feel that? And it immediately took me back to my childhood where I was stung in the thumb under my nail Y'all, y'all don't, yo, the excruciating. What's that word? Excruciating pain. But anywho, um, but it did it three or four times and I'm like, yo, what? But as I read about it, anywho, uh, it was saying like a person that is, you know, a, a bee trusts. It trusts you to land on you. It doesn't see you, see you as being harmful. So, um, and it also mentioned how a person is at peace and at harmony. And a lot of which vibrationally we will realize that as we become more in tune, we become more in tune with nature. Nature will reflect that. Because I'm telling you, I didn't even see this snake come up. And it reared its head because I'm like, yo. Then I saw it like take off. <laughs> you want to see how fast it took off, yo. So 
again, it's nothing to be scared of because, again, that reminds me of snakes before. I actually had a pet python when I was young. I, and then it's so funny. I'm talking about the bee. Well, I had a pet python when I was younger, and I actually got, I was tapping his head, and I actually got bit by it. It, like, it was doing the little head thing, and it actually bit my finger. Um, and again, it, 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 I was just like, a lot of things that we fear really isn't fear at all. It's just the fear, the fear itself is afraid of facing those things or embracing it. And so that fear actually gives room. It's like emotion. It gives room for growth. So, uh, so wrapping up about this picture, the beauty of all of this is again, what this this beautiful being, this baby created, reminded me so much of my life because, again, others may perceive me or perceive this as a mess. I may perceive this as art and beauty and divine and something magical. Now, a lot of us have probably heard things like that and such in the past. Um, so sometimes we need to like reflect on that, like where, wh what are we harboring? What are we keeping in that keeps us from actually embracing the full picture or the bigger picture? Because we all know this feeling of things being feeling like it's out of place all over the place and in reality um every step every uh every step has always been intentional your journey has never been in vain and more so uh there's always going to be the opinions of others especially they're going to talk about and make their opinions and accusations or say whatever because it's easy to judge or to speak on something that you had never done and to speak on something that you didn't have the courage or you wasn't giving uh, the willpower to endure. Meaning they don't know what it is to walk in your shoes. They don't know what it is to be who you are. They don't know what you survived. They don't know your journey like you do. So, uh, that truck ride by. So in essence, never beat yourself up because I had a responsibility in that moment if I could have told that little baby, hey, don't do this. Hey, you shouldn't do this. That doesn't look right. That's ugly. Yada, yada, yada. Come on, man. Now, now look, now reflect on that for a moment in your life because this right here shows me value. What do I value? What do you value? What's important to you? What do you really value? Do you know your value? And I don't mean it being money or material things, like being secure within yourself, your, your spiritual currency. You know, so I just want y'all to ponder on that and see the beauty in what you're becoming and not where you are. Peace and blessings, shalom.